Hi, I'm Joe from Bloomfield, and today I'm going to teach you about your recently installed fiberglass pool. I'm here at our display pool in Newcastle, Ontario. Here we have a 26 foot elegance made by Leisure Pools, and I'm going to show you how to use it. So the first thing we need to talk about is the water level in our pool for regular operation. This right here is our skimmer opening, and you'll notice that debris can float inside and then get caught in a basket. If you look at our water level, it's very important. Right now, it's low enough that a leaf can flow in, but it's tall enough that we have a great amount of water flow going to our pump. So I never want you to let your water level go below halfway on this skimmer. Higher the better. That way, if you don't have time to watch your water levels for a week or so, we're not getting into dangerous territory when it comes to the skimmer. Inside, you will find a skimmer basket. I'll pull it out here so you can see. This is actually a very important little piece of plastic. It is gonna catch all the leaves, frogs, everything else that's floating in your pool. I recommend that you empty this regularly in the spring and fall when there's lots of leaves and debris floating around, windy days. Um, Midsummer, not so much, but it's really good to keep an eye on because all the water flow going to your pump is dependent on this opening, going down into the pipes in the bottom of this skimmer and flowing back to the pump. If this gets full of plastic or toys or goggles or, or garbage, etc., dog hair, and that flow is reduced, your heater doesn't work properly, your salt cell doesn't work properly. So please empty this when you can, check it out. It's, it's a great part of your pool care routine that just takes a second. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in. And while we're over here, I wanna point out one more thing. You'll notice on your pool, you have two skimmer lids. The second skimmer lid is something that is unique to fiberglass pools. In this one, we have a green pipe and it looks like, why do we have this? So this green pipe is basically a big straw that goes all the way down to the deepest point we dug of the hole for your pool. What is happening is it's an area where all the groundwater or the hydrostatic pressure caused by groundwater is, is entering. So we can use a pump like this one. I bought at Princess Auto. It has an attachment on the top for a garden hose. So you screw a garden hose to it and you can lower it down into the sump pump. Why would I do this? If you have to lower the water in your pool for any reason, we need to reduce that hydrostatic pressure that is on the bottom of the pool. So if there is water, when you look in this green pipe, you need to pump it out before you ever lower the water in the pool. It is the most crucial part of this whole video that I need you to remember. This pool without water in it is a boat if there's water under it and it can pop out of the ground. So if you just buy a cheap pump from Princess Auto, Home Depot, Canadian Tire, any of the stores that fits down in this pipe, you can reduce all that stress. So if there's water in the green pipe and it's quite high, I want you to drain it. But the most important times to have the water out of this pipe is when the water in the pool is being lowered or is low for closing. So that's the green pipe. Any questions, please don't hesitate to email the office about that. Um, I'm gonna put the lid back on and we can head over to the pool equipment and talk about how to operate. So we're at our pool equipment. Um, all of your pool equipment is virtually the same if we installed it. Sometimes the pipes come out of the heater in a different layout uh, based on the amount of space you had, but all of you will have a pump, a filter, salt chlorinator and a heater. You may have a gas or a propane heater and a few of you have a heat pump, but we'll get to that. So we talked about how the water level has to be in the pool. We talked about the flow of water coming from the skimmer basket. Those pipes in the bottom underneath the skimmer basket run underground and come up here in the front of our variable speed pump. So right now it's all off so I can teach you how to turn it on. The fittings need to be tight, hand tight. 
if air is getting in the system, it's going to be at the screw on fittings. Before we turn it on, I do want to open up the pump because we have a secondary basket. This basket is going to catch the a little bit smaller stuff that made it through your skimmer basket. Maybe the leaves got pulled through a bit. This isn't a basket that you have to empty a lot, but there's a glass lid so you can see if there's full of debris, empty it. There's a hole. It only fits in the one way, the hole pointed towards the pipe. This lid is just a screw on. No. Tighten it on. Now we have our screen. This is an older pump than most of you will have, but it is the same buttons so we can get the gist of it. So right now the pump is stopped and it says, press stop resume to, re to go back to normal operation. So that's this button. Every time we wanna stop the pool, we hit the stop. Every time we wanna start the pool, we hit the same button that says resume. In this case, I have already added water to the pump. You never want to turn your pump on dry. So there needs to be water in here so that it doesn't overheat and burn out. Also, we need to let any air that I've let into the system out so that the water can prime faster. In this case, on top of your filter, there's this orange tab and it is just an air relief, pressure relief valve. So before we turn our pool on, open that up. And now we're gonna turn the pool on. All of your pools will be set to prime, meaning that the pump will work at high speed for as long as we have programmed it to. This one will only do it for a minute, so it's gonna be loud for a second. Open, I'm hitting resume. There's always a delay when you press the buttons on the pump, so don't panic. Now the screen says priming for 55 seconds. Here we go. Air is coming out of this orange tab. Once water shoots out of it, I'll close it. Fill air, water. So what that's doing is taking the pressure off of the pipes and forcing too many bubbles back to the pool. We still have a little bit of bubbling going on there, but the lid of the pump is filling up nicely with water and we have a good flow going. So for another 23 seconds, this is going at maximum speed to get the air out of the system. Now, something important to point out with a variable speed pump, because they speed up and slow down, this lid will sometimes have air in it. Um, it is not like an old super pump that runs at full speed all the time. So you do have to deal with kind of air flow in and out with a variable speed pump. One thing to know about your variable speed pump is at or once a day, it will turn off turn itself back on again to prime to push that little bit of air out of the system. Now on the pump, we do have other speeds that we can turn up. Now speed three, now it goes faster, speed four. In order to run your pool properly, speed one and two are probably set to the same speed at the moment. A pool heater will only run at a higher RPM. So until you get into a whole bunch of timers and different preferences, Make sure your pump is running at least 1850 RPM in order for your heater to work properly. So at this point, we've caught the big leaves at the skimmer basket. We've caught the little stuff here. Now the water's flowing properly and it's going into our filter. The filter is going to catch all the small stuff. And this is a cartridge filter. Inside, there's four big cartridges um, that you can take out and clean. I'm not gonna do it right now because you can refer to the client pool school portion of our website. There is a specific video there just about how to clean your cartridge filters. So look that up when you got time to do it and really be careful and uh, pay attention as it's something you need to do a lot, okay? So at this point, our water has been very filtered. Big, medium, all the little stuff. Water is flowing through, flowing through into our heater. Okay, we also have a, a video specific on the, uh, the pool school portion of the website about heater errors and how to use it, but I'll give you a quick little demonstration here. Your heater has three buttons, an on button, a hotter button, and a less hot button. So you can hit the on button and put it to spa or pool. There's virtually no difference between those two settings other than thermostat. So you can set one of them to let's say 80 Fahrenheit and the other one to 90 if you want. 
But other than that, the water still comes out at the same temperature. Um, there, there's really no trick to it. The heater will always vent itself. You can hear the fan come on. It's clearing the gases and then it will fire after a few seconds. There are errors that pop up, but please refer to that video I talked about in the section and it will go into detail the errors on the heater and what you can do about it. But we'll let this fire so we know, boom. The flame light is lit up green, meaning that it's operating. But for this case, we're in a, a smaller area here. So I'm gonna turn the heater off just because of the, the fumes while we do the video, okay? So now we have the water being pumped properly. It's been cleaned big, medium, small, and now we've uh, warmed the water up. So now the water's coming out of the back pipe, going up through a check valve. In order for you to have a warranty on your heater, we had to have installed this check valve because what's happening is the bit of salt in the pool is running through the pipe, through here, past a flow switch that the computer operates, I'll get to in a second, and into the salt uh, cell, which has all these webs in it that is it's collecting the salt so that it's being generated into chlorine. Without a check valve, and this system all gets turned off, it backflows, and all that salt is going into your heater, causing more corrosion. So this is something that Hayward wants to know we installed, and we always install one, okay? So the water's coming through here, and now we're going to add just a little bit of chlorine to it to uh, clean the water, sterilize it. At that point, let's go to our computer. Now, I'm going to give you the basics of this again, but there is a, another video on the website that refers to just the system, errors, how to use it, how to clean it, okay? But here's, here's the basics. You have a screen that tells you how, many part, how much salt is in the pool, parts per million. So right now, we have 1,400 parts per million. On our chart here, we should be between 12 and 1,800. We are perfect. Um, underneath it is a knob that says desired output percentage. It should say of chlorine underneath it. So right now we are asking this system to produce 50% of the chlorine it is capable of producing. And you can see it's working by power and the generating line is on. If you don't have enough salt in the pool or the water is too cold, it will not generate and it'll say cold on the screen or all these errors will flash to tell you to add salt. Um, I did say this in the other video, but if you're ever adding salt to your pool, please only add half a bag of pool salt at a time. There is no neutralizer for salt in the pool other than draining it down and adding fresh water. So half a bag, you dump it directly in the pool. You don't do anything with it at the pool equipment. Half a bag of pool salt from Canadian Tire, Costco, uh, pool water testing places, etc. Um, more detail on this, please refer to the, the other video. But my one warning here is when it comes to water chemistry, please have your water tested by professionals until you get the hang of it and know exactly what to do. Take a picture of this chart and a water sample into your local uh, pool supply store. Have the professionals test it with a computer to make sure we are not adding too much corrosion, etc., to your equipment and voiding warranties. And save your receipts just like the oil change on your car so you have proof that you have looked after your equipment. Do not rely on water balancing itself. Refer to that video and we'll move past the salt chlorinator and get down to these valves. So now the water, to recap, has been filtered three times, has been warmed up, has been sterilized, and now it's coming down and it wants to travel back to your pool. This particular pool has a three-way valve. Your pool, if you only have two outputs, will have a three-way valve like this. If your pool only has jets, meaning no waterfall, no bubbler, you will just have a pipe and you don't even need to look for this. This particular pool has its regular returns or jets, and it also has spa jets. So I can control which way the water goes by turning this valve. At the moment, I have the spa jets winterized already, so I'm not going to turn it. But your pool may have a waterfall and spa jets. Control your valve. Now, if you have a pool with multiple water outputs, so 
you could have a built-in spa you could have waterfall bubbler spa jets you could have five pipes here just remember to always keep one of them open all the time if you were to close all your individual valves at once the heater goes woo and can cause some serious problems okay so if you have a three-way valve you don't have to worry because you can turn it one way or the other one valve always staying open at our display pool we, we have a separate pump to run the waterfalls and there are multiple valves so i never close all of them if the pump is running in this case i still had one going to make sure that the pressure can release somewhere back to the pool okay so you may have one that looks like this you may have a three-way valve um, you can play with them to see what does what most of them will be labeled but uh, one valve has to stay open that's my only word of caution okay so we're back out here at the pool we'll talk about a couple more things your pool will have a few pal lights installed your remote is very straightforward another accessory that you may have added is the clear deck cover system so we have one on this pool here it looks like a stainless steel lid at the end of the pool to take the cover out take your your strap uncover it this one has seen better days but what you'll do is take the strap to the end of the pool and i want you to pull the cover straight on if you pull on an angle sometimes it'll get caught but what i've done is started the cover on this end in case it gets caught under the coping or in the box so one person can do it take your strap to the other end pull the cover back on to take the cover off you'll have a crank it goes in the one side like that wind it back in it is important to note that when the cover is coming off you want it to go over top of the reel inside it can't go under this way or it's putting too much pressure on the edge of the box and it can collapse it in so the cover goes up on the coping and down the back of the box and around okay and then close your lid i recommend that you don't keep the uh the reel in the box it'll get very corroded very fast put it somewhere safe so that is how you operate your recently installed fiberglass pool thank you so much for your business do not hesitate to email with your questions and watch all the different videos for different tips and tricks on how to operate your pool thank you very much for watching